Morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to talk about this, the Saxenda weight loss pen. So it's a bit of a different um, video I'm doing here. This is something I've been trialing since last September. I haven't said anything about it on um, YouTube anywhere actually, or I haven't actually told a lot of people, Kev knows obviously, just because I knew that people would have a lot of questions about it and I wanted to give it a full kind of trial and know everything about it before I decided what I was telling people. Um, and so I have come to my conclusions. I'm still using it. I'll probably stop at the end of this week. And the only reason I'm going to stop is money basically because it is quite expensive the first thing i wanted to do is tell you just why i personally feel like i've had a lot of weight struggles um some of it is simply um that i like more food now i used to have real bad food phobias when i was kind of in my 20s and even into my 30s but they're a lot better now so i've got a wider range of food that i love and i feel like i've become a foodie um it's been worse since i gave up smoking which was now 20 years ago but it's, it's definitely been worse um i have polycystic ovary syndrome which means that um all of any fat is kind of held. I hold fat back more around my stomach area than most people do. Um, I've also got something called hyperinsulinemia. So um, that means I've got too much insulin. What happens with that is um, I produce too much insulin, therefore it takes away all the sugar. Therefore I have a sugar crash, which then in turn gives me a sugar craving and then my sugars go too high again, you know, so it's a bit of a, um, a cycle. Uh, and it means that I have cravings for sweet things a lot of the time. Um, I'm so, so fussy with food as well, which makes it very difficult to eat healthy. It's not impossible. And this is not me giving excuses. I'm just sort of explaining my story, if you like. Um, I'm also on a lot of medication that makes it hard to lose weight because I'm on um, different beta blockers, which slow your heart rate down, which means that you, on average, um, don't burn you stop burning three to 400 calories um, when you take those drugs. And so that's a lot. So if I just continued eating the same thing, but take those drugs, I'm going to put on weight. And one of the other things that contributes is migraine, obviously, because many reasons, actually. One, because if I've had a really bad pain day and haven't been able to get any pain relief, there's not much I can do to distract myself. Uh, you know, I can't really hear, hear very much because it's painful. I can't go out. I can't go somewhere. I can't drive. I can't do exercise. Um, so I'll generally eat. That is something that I do reward myself with. So like I said, I'm not, I know that a lot of it is, is also me. Um, and also with migraine, I've been told by the neurologist to eat small meals and often you're supposed to try and keep your blood sugar stable if you possibly can. Uh, you know, you're even advised to snack at night, which is not generally something you're told. Why did I not plug that in? Sorry, got a bit of a microphone issue there, but we, yes, you're even told to snack at night. That can prevent you getting a migraine. Some people that do um, like intermittent fasting, for example, it triggers a migraine. Some people get triggered by doing exercise. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of problems that come with migraine. Um, even down to my neurologist also told me that I needed to eat bread with thick butter on it before taking an aspirin if because aspirin is something that helps me but i've got it causes stomach upset um but anyway so like i said not an excuse but that's my story if you like i have put on a lot of weight over the last many many years to be honest with you since my wedding so 10 years and have been battling to try and keep it off i have tried keto diet and i've i've, I've tried everything i can and so this um People ask me, were you, um, did you have any intention or belief in drugs and things like this pen? And obviously I did, but I'd never, I'd looked into a few and the, there's ones like all stat and I just did not fancy those side effects. They're really quite grim, you know, um, and I, yeah, it, it wasn't for me. There is another drug that I have tried just before I used this, which is called Ribelsis. And that's also available on this website that I'm going to give you that's been really, really good in getting this. You can get this on Boots, I think, but I don't think it's, I think it's cheaper on the website I'm getting it on. Um, but it, the the nausea is something that put me off. I was always frightened that I was going to get nausea and vomiting. And that's something that I have definitely got a phobia of being sick, always have done. Um, and so it's not, it was just a no, no go for me. But I've got to a point where I feel like I'm just in a cycle of, I feel like my migraines and my joints would be better if I could lose weight, but I can't lose weight until my migraines are under control. And I've been trying for years now, going through all the, you know, I'm going on all the anti-CGRP injections, etc., etc. If I could just lose some weight, I feel like my health in general would be better and maybe I could get in some better habits. So does this work? I think this works really well. 
in specific circumstances and I think that it is definitely worth trying if you can afford it. It's £150 for three pens or I think you can probably order one for like £60 maybe something like that or £55. Um, I can't say how long each pen will last you because it depends on the dose you're on because you start on a very low dose. You start at 0.6. There's a little thing here where you just have to turn it to choose what amount to give yourself. That's what the inside of the pen looks like. So I'm nearly at the end of this one and this is my last one. Um, the more pens you buy, the cheaper it is. But when you first start off, you start off at 0.6 milligrams and then you just build up um, till you get to three milligrams. So the pen can last anything from 10 days to a month or more, you know. Um, in fact, I stayed on the lower dose for a lot longer in the beginning. It works immediately. Like literally the day you start it, you will... I think feel the effects. I haven't read, I've read a lot of reviews, watched a lot of videos. I haven't seen anybody that didn't find it worked pretty much immediately. Some people did have to wait until they went up to the second dose to start feeling stuff. It's um, not painful at all, at all. I mean, it's like a little, if you've got a little pin, and in fact, I've got a pin here for some reason, and just went like that. Ow. It's not even that painful. You know, it's like you can barely feel it and it's the tiniest little needle you can imagine. Um, it's not like you have to hold it in for a long time. You just have to you put it in, press the button, let go. It's not complicated at all. You can do it in your bum, in your tummy, in your thigh. I think you can even do it in your arm. So this Saxender pen is filled with lyroglutide and lyroglutide is a diabetic drug. Um, I'm quite aware of this drug because everybody in my family is diabetic and my dad in particular and I used to you know help him with his medication but also there was a lot of studies done on this when I was working in the hospital in medical research um, so lyroglutide is one there's another one called semaglutide, semaglutide that you can get that I would like to try but it's currently out of stock the difference between this one is Saxenda the other one is called Ozempic that has the semaglutide in the other one you only inject once a week. This one you inject once a day. So you might find that a bit um, too much. But for me, I haven't found any issues with it. I've got occasionally get a tiny, tiny little bruise at the injection site. But you just sort of rotate. It's so quick and easy to do. You don't have to keep this in the fridge or anything. I just have it in the top drawer in the kitchen. And I go in, do this injection, take my tablet. That's me done. So very easy. Um, there are... There are risks of side effects and there are also um, there is also one particular concern that they like to tell you about. The risk of side effects is mostly nausea and vomiting. And that was the one the biggest one I was scared of. You know, I was like, no, if, if I get nausea and vomiting, it's just going to be a no from me because I just I can't bear to feel sick. You know, um, so I I tried this very, very cagely in the beginning because of that. Um, but I've had nothing with this at all. I've literally had no side effects whatsoever. Um, one of the big risks that I was saying they tell you about is there is a chance of getting a particular, no, I can't say there's a chance of getting, they are worried about the risk of getting a particular type of thyroid cancer, especially if you have it in your family. Um, but it's a very specific one. It's a rare one. And the reason that they're worried is because in rats, rats develop this type of tumour when testing this particular drug. But remember, this is a um, an approved drug for diabetes. Um, and so it just tells you to look out for like lumps in your neck or a hoarse voice or any of the typical kind of side effects, uh, symptoms of that particular type of cancer. But they have not yet, there's no link between humans. They've not, it's, it hasn't happened in, in humans. It's only in rat studies. So they can't say that it is definitely a risk. So that was a risk I was willing to take, to be honest, because like I said, I've got to the point where I am. Um, it's it's just that cycle that I was talking about where I, I've got a migraine most of the time I'm in pain. And so I can't exercise. Exercising can cause exercise can cause a migraine. Um, but I feel like if I lose weight, I will take a lot of um, pressure off of my joints. Anti-inflammatory effect will help my migraines. You know, my heart will be in less trouble. The, the, you know, I've got high cholesterol and high blood pressure and whatnot. So I just felt like this this was the one for me specifically as this is a diabetic drug as well and i have that um blood sugar imbalance um issue i thought that this would be particularly useful okay so let me tell you exactly what happened for me so i started taking this like i said in september last year i was taking it the whole time i was on holiday and i started off then at about 86 kilos um which i don't know what it is in stone but i'll tell you how much i lost in kilos and in pounds 
Um, so I started off at about 86 kilos and I started off on the lowest dose of 0.6 milligrams. You know, usually to take that for a week and then to increase it to 1.2. In fact, I didn't even go to 0.6 thinking about it because I was so worried about the nausea that I wanted to start even lower. Now on here, you'll see if I turn it, the first one it comes to, I've gone right past it, is 0.6. But what I did was I went to 0.6 and then I just turned it back a few and tried it that way and just gave myself a tiny, tiny little bit. Um, Realised I had no symptoms, then would just do one more click. So I would count the clicks I was doing rather than using this counter um, once in the morning. And it only took a few days for me to realise I wasn't getting any side effects at all. And so I increased it to 0.6. As soon as I increased it to 0.6 um, was when I noticed a huge difference, like a huge difference. And that lasted probably for about four weeks. Um, and I did start increasing the dose um, because it would definitely, the effect would almost double. You know, as soon as you went up a little bit, you would notice even more of an effect. And the, the way that it was affecting me was I... The things that it didn't change is it didn't change um, my desire for breakfast. Now I was taking it, injecting about seven o'clock in the morning and I still wanted my breakfast, definitely. I was still hungry for my breakfast. But after my breakfast, which was my normal shake breakfast and I had the same amount, um, I could probably have missed lunch. There was a few days it would get to sort of two o'clock and I'd be like, oh my goodness, I haven't had any lunch. I'm not really that hungry. That is unheard of for me. When I'm not on this injection, I would be lucky to get to 12 o'clock for my lunch. And I'd normally have had some kind of snack in the morning, either a couple of pieces of dark chocolate or a boiled egg or a cracker, something. I'd have something, then I'd have my lunch and I'd be, still be desperate for my lunch as close to 12 o'clock as I could make it. Then I'd have another snack in the afternoon. Then I'd be crazy hungry by sort of four or five o'clock, desperate for dinner, but Kev doesn't get home till late. So um, none of that, I didn't have that at all. I didn't feel hungry, but I wasn't like nauseous or anything. I was just like, I'm not particularly that hungry, but I would still have my lunch because you do still need to eat on this, you know? And I think there was one day I didn't eat at all. And by sort of four o'clock, I could feel the hung, not the hunger, I could feel like I needed something in my body. It's hard to explain, but I ended up just snacking on something junky. So it doesn't take away, it didn't for me take away my need for breakfast or my desire for junk food. I think I could have had a chocolate bar for lunch and that would have been all I needed. So that's really not the way to go, obviously. Um, but I was delighted with this and um, I actually didn't for the first month change my eating habits at all because my eating habits are actually not that bad. Um, it's obviously the amount, it's the portions, you know. Um, because what I noticed is when we were on holiday, um, we would go for lunch, which again, was it was so much more um, convenient for me because it wasn't like, right, we need to make sure we're fine somewhere for lunch by 12 o'clock, otherwise I'm gonna start feeling all jittery, I could get a migraine, that didn't happen. Um, I wasn't as desperate for lunch. So we would maybe go for lunch about one o'clock, we would get, a cheese toasty or something not particularly healthy when we were on holiday and I would eat half of it and say you know what that's me done and I wasn't like completely full you know oh I can't eat another bite but it was just like that's enough I don't need to have to eat the whole thing I did the same with dinner I was having um a glass of wine and maybe we would buy some snacks but I wouldn't eat many of them I'd, I'd eat like one or two and be like that's enough for me so I was just jumping for joy in the first four weeks of using this um, and I would say I went down to 80 kilograms so that means I lost six kilograms which is around about 12 pounds so about a stone so I lost a lot um, then for some reason it this just seemed to stop working for me um, I just I think that you have to have kind of a bit of the right frame of mind because I, I almost felt like I, I relied on this too much and was just like, well, I can eat whatever I want, you know, and I stopped just eating half my lunch, even though I'd stopped being hungry. I was like, oh, well, I'll finish the rest of it because, you know, this is helping me. It's almost like I leaned too much onto this and maybe my stomach expanded again. I don't know. And I just was being a bit crazy, you know, um, so that, that was discouraging for me, but also not sensible, if you know what I mean. I, I, you've got to, there's got, there is an element of willpower. This didn't, 
necessarily isn't going to give you willpower forever or not for me anyway it did in the first like I said three or four weeks it's almost like it just everything worked out perfectly I could have a little bit of whatever I wanted didn't ever feel sick didn't eat too much and was just losing weight really easily but then like I said it whether it was me or whether it was just me getting used to this it just or my body getting used to it it just stopped working for me as well it still kept me full um this is the thing I would say it was definitely it stopped working for me in terms of I was giving in to all of my cravings and I was finishing my meals rather than consciously trying to not eat the whole plate because I was full enough, you know. Um, so what I decided to do, because I kind of looked it up and thought, right, okay, what happens when it stops work? I decided to give it a break and then I thought I'll try it again and see if like it maybe just kick starts it. So I didn't take it for, I think, about three weeks and um also money was an issue you know because I actually spent my birthday money on this that's how desperate I was to or am to lose weight in that time in the the four weeks before I got another lot of pens I had put a lot of weight back on again um started taking this again and and it definitely did go back to having that same effect for a couple of days but then it just sort of leveled out if you like and I think my friend actually pointed this out to me the other day it seems like everything I ever take is wildly um successful in the first one two three weeks or whatever and then it just seems to settle and not work for me that's happened with the migraine drugs it, it's happened with so many things over the years so many different things have worked for me and then they just stop working for some reason I got in touch with the company and was asking them about it and they were saying that some people do find that Saxenta does stop working for them. I hadn't heard anybody else that just done a review or talked about it had that happened to them. I think that, like I said, I took this for granted was one of the issues. The other issue was I'm still having migraines. It didn't change the migraines either way. I made sure I, I monitored that closely. Um, had hoped it might have helped with, you know, with the sugar being more imbalanced, but it didn't help the migraines, but it didn't make them worse. But that meant that I still had migraines every day. And so still had that desire for something to give me joy in life. If you like, when you've had a whole day of pain and the only thing that will help is food, for me anyway, then um, that was hard to get over, if you like. And like I said, I was probably too reliant on this. Even to the fact of like, I used to have a Bacardi and Diet Coke at the weekends, but I this changed my taste a little bit and I ended up drinking strawberry wine. But obviously that's got way more calories in it than my Bacardi and Diet Coke. And I would start off just, I'd just have half a glass and then I was having a glass and then I was having a glass and a half and then it ended up, did up being two or sometimes three glasses of wine. It's almost like I was just taking advantage of this and pushing it too far um i want that's one of the other i'm saying i didn't get any side effects i did get a side effect there was one day i had really bad heartburn um and indigestion but that's something that i get a lot anyway so i don't know that it was necessarily to do with this but i just took antacids and it was fine oh um, i was saying that one of the side effects the side effect i did get was a change in taste so i've noticed that whenever i'm taking this my morning shake does not taste as delicious. <laughs> um, I can't taste the sweetness as much, which I think is maybe why I ended up drinking wine instead of Bacardi, because my Bacardi didn't taste the same and the wine, which is a lot sweeter, tasted a lot nicer and I don't normally like wine. Um, so I, it didn't taste it didn't change it in that I didn't like sweet things, which was a shame. It would be good if, it, if I could take something that would put me off <laughs> sweet things. Um, so overall, I like I said, lost about between 12 and 14 pounds, but I've put seven of those back on. So I'm currently just under 82 kilos. So means I've lost four kilos, eight, eight or nine pounds. So it's still not too bad, but considering that is over September, October, November, December, January, five or six months, um, I probably could have lost more had I been consistent. Because remember, like I said, I wasn't using this pen that whole time. I tried it again after a month. Then I stopped it all over Christmas and put more weight on. Um, and then I just recently bought, treated myself, if you like, to three pens and tried it again to see, is it working? Um, and it's working for me in that it fills me up, but it's I'm having to be more concentrated on on the choices I'm making. So who do I think this will work for and do I think it's worth it? I 100% think it's worth it. I think that this would be ideally suited to people two kinds of people people that want if you want a quick weight loss for something so if you have some kind of event coming up I don't know a family member's wedding or a friend's wedding or something you know an event that you are like I really want to lose 
an amount of weight for that, I think this would be perfect for that because I haven't heard anybody for whom it didn't work at the beginning. And for me, it certainly worked for, like I said, the first month fantastically. Um, if I had not have then stopped it or had Christmas and, you know, gone a bit crazy, I could have kept that weight loss off. Um, so that's my own fault. That's a whole nother video or discussion. Um, so I think it would be great if you have an event and you're looking to specifically get down to a particular weight. Um, if you are consistent with this, so I would say if you used it for maybe two months or more, I think that it would be good if you're looking to change habits and you need some help with that. So if you're looking to not snack in the evening or not snack in the day or, you know, whatever the habit is you're trying to break, it's known that it can take, it takes 42 occasions um, of you doing something to break a habit, but this would help you. You could do this for 42 days, you know, whatever it was, like not eating something normally. <laughs> um, and this would definitely help with that. And then maybe after that, you know, things would change. That's what I was hoping would happen. But like I said, I wasn't consistent with taking the pen. The other group of people that I think it would be really good for is people that are busy um, and so end up grabbing something that is unhealthy and, you know, eating takeaways and grabbing a sandwich while you're out or things like that. If you don't have time to like, because there's all these, you know, we all know what we're supposed to eat and that we're supposed to cook a home cooked meal and have this for lunch and, and this for breakfast and all the rest of it. But like Kev has just, he's changed his eating habits just now because he's, he's have, he's got a nearly two hour commute. And so he doesn't have time to have breakfast in the morning. He's leaving at quarter to seven. And so he's changed to having a little yogurt pot with granola in it rather than his no sugar Alpen with um, a pot of yogurt and putting a little bit in. So there can be things like that that affect you. And I think those are the type of people that would really help because it kind of, you can carry on being busy and not worry so much about food because you'll be full up for longer. And if you do buy those unhealthy things, you won't eat as much of them. You know, you will only eat a little bit. And I'm the only person I know, like I said, that this has only lasted a month. Other people have gone off it, um, have stopped it because they achieved their weight loss or um, some have gone off it because they didn't like the, they, they did have some nausea from it. Um, many different reasons, but I haven't heard of anybody else like me who's it's just stopped working for. So those are the people I think would really like this. So you've got an event, you're busy and you need to, you're busy and you eat rubbish basically. Um, although obviously it would be better if you could change to being healthier. Um, but this video is a review of this, not not talking about what we should and shouldn't do, if you know what I mean. I'm sure somebody will comment that I haven't got enough willpower and I should be doing this, that diet and that diet. This is this video is about sex center and whether it does work or not. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned at the beginning, I did try the Ribelsis um, drugs before this, the tablets, and I had to stop them almost immediately. I was only on those three or four days and it wasn't a good experience. Um, but again, there's something very specific to me that stopped that working. So I'm going to do a, its own little video on that just to talk about it about it in case anybody's keen um on the website that i'm going to direct you to pharmacy i can't remember it's called pharmacy if you something like that they're absolutely brilliant they the this arrived i think either the next day or the day after so it's something that like if you ordered it today you're going to get it you're going to have it within two days um, and you can get started immediately. You don't have to wait for anything. But they do also offer the other types of tablets like um, the Orlistat type of tablets that don't have very nice gastric side effects um, and the Ribelsis that I talked about. Um, the next, the one I would like to try, so I don't currently have any plans to buy any more of these pens. I'm going to give myself a little time off it and see if I can just through hopefully some, some more habits with this, like not snacking in between meals, um, I can continue losing weight. I am currently losing weight at the moment. Um, but I would really like to try Ozempic because Ozempic, which is the same group, the same class of drugs, but it's also for diabetics, but it's supposed to be a little bit more effective. But of course, the bigger risk with it is, um, again, the nausea. And because it's one that you only inject once a week, if you inject it and then you're nauseous, you've got to wait for a week for it to go away. Whereas with this one, it's only ever going to be one day. Not even, it would take, you know, not very long at all for you to feel better. So I am kind of dubious about <laughs> the Ozempic. If ever I do use it, I will let you guys know. But like I said, it's not in stock at the moment. Um, 
I think I've told you everything. Let me just check through my notes. Oh, the process for ordering. Um, you have to fill out some questions. You have to put in your weight. Um, I think, I don't know what would happen if you weren't as overweight as they'd like you to be, um, because I think there is a chance you could get this on the NHS, actually. You can get it if, well, in Scotland anyway, I looked it up. You can get it if you are have a BMI of 30 or above, plus have something like high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which I have both, and I was a BMI, or still am a BMI, over 30. I think I was 31. Um, but you have to first go through a whole diet programme with the NHS, an NHS nutrition class, if you like, and then they would trial you on something like Saxenda. Um, so you could do it that route if you didn't want to pay for it. But to me, typically, I'm always impatient and want to do things quickly, you know. Um, but the process online is so simple. You don't have to speak to anybody on the phone. You just fill in the form with your details, with your height and everything. Um, you don't have to put a photo on this website, which I like because um, the, I had tried to get it off another website before. Um, was it Boots? Maybe Boots. But it just they were asking for photos and I couldn't get the photo right. It was never uploading. Whereas this was very, very simple and they don't ask for your doctor's details either they do tell you that it's up to you to let your doctor know but they don't they're not going to let them know whereas I think I know if you go through boots they will let your doctor know um so yeah a very simple process no issues with it at all and that's everything to tell you I think um if you've got any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below um I will I I will and always have intended to come and update you with my weight if ever it stay stable and I lose a significant amount you know for me it would be really good to get under 80 kilos and like I said I'm under 82 now so if I could get back to being under 80 kilos that would be a start because I've struggled to do that since probably since dad died actually because again I, ha I had a lot of food for comfort after he died I hope you found this useful I am of course going to put the link for this in the um, description below um, and yeah let me know if you've got any questions I hope you're all doing well and I'll speak to you again soon